is up everybody welcome to another video as you can see here I am in the Corvette today and it's been a while since I posted a Corvette video if you guys would like to be so kind give this video a thumbs up and just show it some love because like I said I usually post KLX videos and it's been a while since I posted some Corvette videos but also hit that subscribe button because you guys are not going to want to miss some of this Corvette content that I have coming for you guys should have a reaction video a new exhaust pure sound video a winding road run with an exhaust mic and future plans for the car as well but yeah we are trying to hit 500 subscribers before the new year or at least get close to it I think we can do it so go ahead right now hit that subscribe button get the bell on to keep up with all these Corvette and KLX videos if you would like to know what is done to the Corvette go ahead and take a look down in that description got all the mods there and as you can see here it will be getting dark shortly and we are going to head to a car meet. It is actually the first one of this car meet. It's a new car meet. So we'll see what we got there. Get a nice cinematic edit for you guys. And then we'll be off into the video. Ah, yes. Wet traction. Always a fun time in the Corvette. It's actually interesting here because if I downshift here to first and I shift the gears by myself, seems to hook up better in first gear rather than keeping it in drive this is an automatic I know four speed blah 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 the racing I usually do with it is drag racing so the four speed gets the job done pretty well as you guys can see here we got the Christmas lights put up here in the city actually when I come back through here I'm gonna have to get you guys a better shot of Christmas lights in the main park in the central downtown part of the city here. But it is getting to be that time of year. All right, guys, here we are. Let's see what we got. I got some good shots for you guys. It's actually a really good meet. It's a newer meet. One of my friends is putting it on. And lots of cool cars there. There's twin turbo Audi R8. GTR showed up. And then of course you got some nice JDM there. And a little bit of muscle. But I'm going to go home, get some sleep, and we will continue this video on tomorrow. Oh, before we go, here are the Christmas lights here. Downtown. Pretty nice. All right, guys, see ya tomorrow. See, here's the first problem right here. Alright 
Alright guys, here we are on the outside of the car. The first problem with the Corvette, mine at least, is that on my hood, the clear coat is peeling, as you can see here. This is a Carbon Creations carbon fiber hood. I got it to fit the supercharger under here. I got the hood about two years ago, and it's been good all the way up until a few months ago, and then this started to happen. I like the look of the carbon fiber, so I think I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm just gonna get it re-cleared instead of wrapping it. But had I had known, reading some of the reviews, about the Carbon Creations hood, I wouldn't have got it. It wasn't specified by Whipple, which is where I got the hood from, that it would be a Carbon Creations hood, but it is. So this burn mark was here when I got the hood. And then this one right here, you can see the outline of it right there. That was a burn mark, but it wasn't too noticeable. And as you can see from the picture that I'm going to put up, it looked pretty sharp with it. All right, so that is problem number one of the exterior. Problem number two is actually related to the suspension. And I've had this issue from when I first got the car. The issue itself is actually the ride height position sensor, which is why I'm pointing right here because it is, it is at the bottom of the shock. And the issue that I originally had was that every time I put the car in a lift, that sensor would come undone. And I took it to someone well, first I took it to the dealer, actually. And all they would do was just plug in the sensor again. Because I don't have my own jack. But after I realized this issue, I took it to Wong's Performance in Washington. You guys probably know him if you're a Corvette guy like myself. Anything LS, GM, does great work too. So he actually rerouted that connector so that way when I do go up on a lift, the issue wouldn't occur anymore. Until probably eh, six months later, and I was getting my wheels all cleaned up from the previous owner, he curbed them, and the wheels went back on, and all of a sudden the service ride control light came back on. At that point I was stuck because the issue was actually fixed at Wong's Performance. So I took it to the dealer, the connector was fine, and now the light only comes on intermittently. So I'm gonna have to get that issue diagnosed with a Tech 2 scanner because it can read BCM codes. And yeah, like I said, it only happens intermittently instead of regularly like it did before, before the sensor was rerouted. So it's kind of odd, but another issue that can get fixed pretty easily as long as I get that Tech 2. All right, so that was problem number two. Now for problem three. As you can see here, I have the key. And so I should be able to open the door, but I go right here and the light comes on, but yet it does not open. So of course the first thing I checked was the key fob battery. That wasn't it. The voltage is above three volts. It's actually at like 3.1. So the fob, the fob battery is good. I've replaced that like three or four times since the issue started to happen. So again, another intermittent issue. So at times I can't actually get into my car and I have to go through the trunk, which is quite embarrassing. Like you guys saw in the beginning of the video. When I do so, the alarm goes off as such. And voila, just like that, I'm in the car. But the issue doesn't stop there. Again, no fobs detected. So, I have to go into the glove box here, go to the little slot, make sure the buttons are facing towards the passenger side of the vehicle, put the key in, and then go ahead and start. So like most people, I went to the Corvette forums and researched this issue extensively. I found the usual results that most people do. Check the RC DLR and listen for the clicks to go off here. As you can see when I put my foot on the brake. You can hear those relays go off. And while I didn't hook this up to a Tech 2 like I said, I assume that the RC DLR is good because I can hear those clicks and also kind of by the process of elimination, the main culprit probably I'd say 70% of the time that people say is the car battery itself. So the reason 
I have faith that it's probably not the RCDLRs because when I checked the battery voltage, it was pretty low. It was probably about 12.2 just sitting overnight. And 12.2, if you guys don't know, a fully charged battery should be, I believe, 2.2 volts per cell. So six cell battery should be 13.2 volts. And then going down to 12.6 volts, I forget how it goes. I think that's like 75% and the 12.4 goes down to like 50%. So in essence, it's not a linear curve for the battery life of your car battery. So one of the first things I did, besides checking the voltage, is charging up the battery. And I did so, and the voltage got up to 13.6 volts, and the car would work for a few days. The key worked as normal and had no issues. And then I drove it for a few days, and then the issue would return. So check the voltage. After shutting off the vehicle, after driving it, 12.6 volts. So, I figured it was weird, might as well put it back on the charger. Well, that I did, and again, the car worked for a few days. So, I'm pretty certain that the car battery is actually the issue of this no fobs detected, the infamous no fobs detected issue on the Corvette. But the second time I put the battery on the charger, I actually checked the voltage after I let the car sit overnight and when I pulled it off the charger, the battery was at 12.6 volt. And just letting it sit overnight, it dropped down to 12.2. So that kind of tells me that the car battery is probably on its last leg. And I know what you're saying. Go ahead and check the date. Well, I'll put a photo up here. The Whoever installed this battery didn't punch out the dates when the battery was installed or when it was made, whatever. So unfortunately, I have no idea when this fine deck of gold battery was made. But I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a little bit of corrosion down there from the battery. So, again, another sign that the battery is probably on its way out, and that is probably my issue right there. If not, I will be sure to update you guys. But I'm pretty certain that's what the issue is. On the other hand, this makes up for it right here, basking in all of its glory. Magnuson 2.3 liter Roots Supercharger, long tube headers. And you guys can see all the mods down in the description below. But that about does it for problem number three and the exterior problems of the vehicle. Everything else is really related to when I'm driving the vehicle. And like I said before, these issues obviously are little, 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 little issues in comparison to when I'm actually driving the car because as you can see, it's a whole lot of fun. It gets the tires spinning and you know, just gives that car guy adrenaline. So now we'll go ahead and take a drive and I will explain to you the last two issues while I'm driving the car. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into that. All right, problem number four. My Corvette is a 3LT, which means that it has heated seats and heads up display. And as you can see, there is nothing being displayed on the heads up. Go over here to my controls, move the picture up and down, and there's nothing happening. This is because of another infamous issue with the Corvette, and that issue is that there's a little bracket that holds the mirror up for the heads up display that then reflects the image onto the windshield, and that bracket has broken, therefore the mirror slid down, allowing me no longer to see my heads up display. This is not such a big deal. I have a speedometer and an RPM gauge right here. The heads up display does offer a G-force meter, which is actually pretty cool. Testing my limits a little bit. I think the highest I saw it go was about one G. Of course, I wasn't going sideways because I'm sure if I was, the G meter would be a lot higher. But the heads up display is pretty nice for you know those high speed runs in Mexico. So that way you don't really have to take your eyes off the road that much. You just look straight ahead and the speed is already in your face. All right, that's it for problem number four. Now, problem number five is totally aftermarket. And point at the nav. I also have a little Bluetooth module installed as well, so 
I can talk on the phone hands-free. The issue with that is, well, my hands-free doesn't work. And I think this also ties into another issue. And that is, sometimes when I hit a bump, I get a little bit of a whine from my speaker over here, my little tweeter. The funny thing is, is that the whine is associated with the RPMs and like everyone else, well, maybe not everyone else, but like I would do, I checked the Corvette form and it seems that it might be tied to the alternator. So that's a simple fix again, but the Bluetooth thing, not exactly sure what's wrong with that, but like I said, totally aftermarket and it's also covered under warranty. Alright guys, that is going to wrap up the five problems I have with my C6 Corvette here. Like I said earlier, these issues really aren't super big issues. They certainly don't take away from the fun I have driving the car, as you guys have seen in this video. But they're just kind of little issues that I need to get sorted out eventually here. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I wanted to make this video because some of these issues that I have listed here relate to the future plans of the vehicle. I wanted to make this video before I make that video because I think the plans I have in store for this car when fully executed I think it's going to be pretty awesome and it's going to make the car a whole lot more fun to drive and to take the shows and stuff. If you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Also share this video to your friends and those who may enjoy it or even those who may be able to help out with some of these issues, any suggestions. So with that, be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any input on some of these issues. So be sure to stay tuned and hit that subscribe button, get the bell on for more Corvette content coming up. We should have a new reaction video coming up, so that's gonna be exciting. And of course, we're gonna have future videos. I have a list of Corvette videos to make, such as future plans, a pure sound video, can and run. So you guys aren't really gonna miss that. And I think, that is going to do it. So with all that being said, join the club, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, I'm the motherfucker.